I was a propellant transfer systems uh, PTS technician on the Titan II missiles. It was a small group of us. We're, we're more of a brotherhood than anything else. We're very close knit. We worked together and we worked well as a team. And like I said, we were young, so we became like family. Very hazardous fuels. Uh, one is nitrogen tetroxide uh, oxidizer, and the other one is unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine. Our job made 60 minutes, so it was the most dangerous job in the United States Air Force. Not only were these guys dealing with uh, nuclear warheads, they are dealing with highly volatile fuels. The job is incredibly dangerous. We would work in with a buddy system. You always had to have two, two men or women uh, in suit in the rocket fuel handler clothing outfit. So it's called REFCO. Basically, they look like a spacesuit. I was listening in according to the technical order, opening and closing valves. They were getting ready to take off the, the pressure cap, and the socket wasn't all the way attached to the ratchet handle. It fell from level two, probably 70 or 80 feet, and it ruptured the stage one hydrazine tank. Uh, I mean, it was traumatic for them to watch this socket f fall and bounce off the platform and see it go towards the missile and then to get past it. Nothing's supposed to be able to get past the uh, platforms. So to see this eight pound socket get squirt through there, falling 70 feet, oh my gosh, there's no way to stop it. And you know, hopefully it, it drops into the bottom of the W, which it did. It hits that bottom thrust mount, bounces into the tank, punches a hole inside the tank, and they're watching this spray out. There's no way to stop this or contain this, and they see this instantly, this white, smoke cloud just coming up the up the silo towards them attention on a complex this is pad safety there's been a major spill in the test cell all personnel evacuate the clock house immediately attention on the complex this is pad safety there has been a major oxidizer spill in the test cell all personnel clear to the clock house immediately ready to suit up and, and go down uh, to the silo my supervisor at the time was David Livingston, and at the last minute, he came up and said, hey, you stand down, fill, fill air packs, I'm, I'm gonna go down. David Livingston and Jeff Kennedy entered the silo, hoping to remedy the situation before it gets any worse. They couldn't see anything. The, the vapors were so thick, and uh, that is where the metering equipment was for the toxic levels and they couldn't even see the panel. So they had to get right up against, right up real close to it, and then they could see all the bright lights. And when they called that back to the commander, said, this thing's pegged out, everything's lit up red. They said, come back, come back immediately. So Jeff Kennedy and Dave Livingston quickly uh, exited the complex there. The command went to both of them, so they can both hear it on the radio, said, go turn the exhaust fan on. Livingston patted himself on his chest and he said, I'll get it. He was telling Jeff, I'll get it. So he walks down, gets down to the very bottom, flips the fan switch on, walks back up the steps. So within seconds of that fan switch coming on, um, the missile exploded. To watch this socket fall and bounce off the platform and see it go towards the missile, and then to get past it, nothing's supposed to be able to get past the uh, platforms. There was a lot of anxiety coming over the radio. This white smoke cloud just coming up the up the silo towards them. When we started seeing all the fumes coming out of the exhaust shaft, we knew it wasn't good. David Livingston and Jeff Kennedy entered the silo, hoping to remedy the situation before it gets any worse. So Livingston patted himself on his chest and he said, I'll get it flips the fan switch on, walks back up the steps. So within seconds of that fan switch coming on, the missile exploded. It was like a bang, the loudest bang I ever heard in my life. It broke my right eardrum. I mean, a bang and a concussion. And the concussion was wind. It just threw me on my back. I was probably an eighth or a tenth of a mile up the access road when it blew. I wasn't that far, but even up there, I could feel the, 
the blast of the heat, it felt like a blast furnace. So I can just imagine what they went through, you know, down there at the gate. I'm sliding on my back, and it's getting faster and faster and faster going up the street. I feel like I'm gonna slam into something at any time. And luckily there was nothing behind me. It was all asphalt road. It looked like a nuclear bomb went off. I mean, it was just a, a ball of fire that went what seemed like as high as you could see. But, I mean, it was, everything was just under such pressure from being in that silo and stuff. It, it broke windows out of houses miles away. They claimed, I've heard somebody say that they actually heard the blast all the way back at the base, which was almost an hour away. It's like 750,000 pound uh, blast door that goes over the missile. And it blew that over a quarter mile away. I mean, just straight up over, missed all the treetops and set it down. 